Glory to God, my name is Glory to God, my name is Kathy Brox, and this is the L U T G Radio Show. On L U T G Radio.com, WKKP Digital Broadcasting. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh today we're gonna be talking about well, today is like a, a free day. So we at the end of the week. We at the end of the week. So today is Friday. Um, but if I ever happen to replay this, you'll know if it's not a Friday <laughs> that this is a rerun. But today it's live. And so anyway, uh today is Friday. This is kind of a free day, you know, sometimes on free days. What I'll do is uh, just talk about the things that have been on my mind, uh, questions I've been asking God or just, you know, thinking about on my own and waiting for God to respond. And so we're going to put on our armor of God first before I get to telling you all that. And I do know that the video for this is a little bit dark. Uh, and that's because I changed the light. And the, uh, it's not as such as it was before. Hold on a sec. I think I, (laughs) I don't know what I just put up in here. Oh. And so anyway, um, I had changed the lighting and I did not get the correct one. And so sometimes it comes off like super duper duper bright or like weird bright. And so I was trying to fix it. So I have to, I have to go, I have to go and get (laughs) another light. So anyway, all right. So that's if you're looking at the uh, video, but let's go ahead. Luke 24, 45, it says, then open the, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Remember Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. We are working on memorizing this. We've been saying it every day. Um, sometimes when you say something, you memorize part of it. But when you purposely, intentfully memorize it, then you you got it. So let us start purposefully uh, memorizing this. Because you don't know when you may need to call upon this. Amen. And so here it goes. This is like saying uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 6. Amen. So this is your armor. You always want to be ready with your armor. Here we go. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking a shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Go to Numbers chapter 6, starting off at verse 24. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Us Go to Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. 
Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon. Shall thou trample under feet. Because he have set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will honor him. I will, I'm sorry. Therefore, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he have known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I mean... I, I, I mean, I apologize for making an error. Sorrow, that, that word sorry means like sorrow, grief, like it's like a, a heavy weight. I don't like that word. Anyway, uh, Isaiah, go to Isaiah 54. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Amen, glory to God. Jesus loves you, beloved, and so do I. Amen. God is into you 100%. Oh, I forgot to pray uh, before we started. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you alone are worthy of all the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise. I thank you, Lord God, for this day. I thank you, Lord God, for waking us this morning. And uh, for some of you guys are listening in the evening, thank you, Lord God, for the full day. Amen. We thank you, Lord God, for being our provider for you, our Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, Lord God, for your love and for your righteousness. We thank you, Lord God, for your might. Thank you, Lord, for being whole, that you, Lord God, may make us whole. We thank you, Lord God, for our salvation. We thank you for your Son and for your comfort of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us so much. You made us in your image, and you redeemed us when we erred, and you correct us. Lord God, when we move in a direction that does not bless you nor us, if it doesn't bless you, Lord, it doesn't bless us. We thank you, Lord God, for our salvation and for being our father, our husband, man, our bridegroom, our comforter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, so I got to thinking about existence and whatnot and how can I be more like Christ? I'll admit, that is my every thought every day. Every day, just about all day. Am I being like Jesus? Am I honoring God? Is my life a blessing unto the Lord? If God came and got me today, would he say, I'm good before his sight? I am, I'm, I, I wondered, okay, did I do that right? Did it, it, did, I didn't offend the Holy Spirit, did I? And so I listen to the Bible a lot uh, and I read, uh, but I may spend more hours listening um, because I just have it planned all, you know, I try and have it planned constantly. 
and and so anyway, um, I, I I heard the the things that were being read, and it was in, and I looked, and I was like, well, whoa, what is? I was like, okay, I've heard this before. It's mentioned four times, in the Book of Revelations, I believe. And I was like, and so I went to the Book of Revelations, and it didn't show. And then I heard it again. And I said, well, and I looked. I said, well, what part is this audio reading? And it's reading. It was reading Isaiah eleven. So that tells you right there that I don't know everything. I don't know everything. I'm obedient. I'm obedient unto the Lord. And so, and I listen to different pastors so I can learn faster. That's how I learn fast. I I, I listen to, I, I, I seek God's voice and his presence. I'm, I'm doing all I, all I know how to do. You know what I mean? And so anyway, and what I don't know, I ask God, look, help me, help me. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a, I want to help you in the kingdom of God by doing John 14 and 12, you know, but it don't end at verse 12. (laughs) I've been quoting John 14 and 12 so much. I forgot to look at the rest of it. (laughs) I saw that and I was like, yes. That is that is the scripture right there. That's the scripture. <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Because I kept saying, God, I want to help, but won't nobody let me help? Nobody, nobody. They won't let me help, even as a kid. You sick. Oh, go sit down somewhere. You a girl, go sit down somewhere. You too skinny. You ain't got no strength. Go sit down somewhere. No, no, we got it. We don't need you. I was like, man, I think I'm getting a little offended here. (laughs) So John 14 and 12 said, well, first verse 11 says, believe me that I am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very works sake. Verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I pray and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither nor him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. I will leave, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. And that day shall, uh, and that day ye shall know that I am in the Father. And ye in me and I in you. And he that hath my commandments and keep of them. He it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscara, Lord, how is it? That thou with manifest, wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the fathers which sent me. These things I have spoken unto you, being not yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
whom the father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you, not as the world giveth. I give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Ye have heard now, I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it came to pass that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk with you for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me, but that he would know that I love the father. And as the father gave me commandment, even do, even so I do arise, let us go hence. (sighs) Okay. And so that's John 14, starting off at verse 11. But uh, verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And so you can read the uh, other few lines before that. But And so I was kind of stuck on John 14 and 12. Greater thing. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, greater things than I shall you do. Because I go home to the Father. And I was just stuck on that. And I was just like, wow, okay, okay. And because because what I heard when I was reading that, what I heard was, Kathy, you can help. I give you permission to help. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto the Father. Now, when he says he, that is in reference to man, not just male man. It's he man and man is is the one that was saved, not just male, but female, male and female, both. And so, uh, so when I read that, I was like, yeah, that's for me. That's for me, you know, because I would go to church and I like I said, I tried to join the choir and they was like, hey, no, nah, you black and you can't sing. It's like, dang, dude, everybody got to learn something. <laughs> but I come to find out it wasn't because it wasn't that I couldn't sing. It was that I was sinning. I, well, not sinning. I was fornicating. So for a Christian to be saved and to uh, still act like they are a sinner, it's fornication. And so I was fornicating. And so, which means I was erroring. It's still sin. But uh, as a Christian, you don't sin because you've been redeemed of sin. But you do. Um, you do do errors. We, I guess they call them errors. Er- errors of your ways. And so I'm going to just use the proper the word for it. It's fornicating. I was having sex outside of marriage with the pastor. Because I had asked him to pray for me. And he said, oh, yeah, I'll pray for you. Because I was like, oh, I'm ready to get married. I want a husband. Pray for me for a husband. And he was like, I volunteer. (laughs) I volunteer. Because I had been abstaining and whatnot. And um, I had been abstaining and I, I, I wanted, I was just, I was like, I'm ready. I'm 28. I was like, I'm 28. I'm ready. I want to get married. I want to have babies. I want, and the, yeah, that did not happen. When when a, when people ask you to pray for them, pray for them. Don't volunteer to be that thing, especially if you're not gonna follow through. You ain't following through, then don't volunteer. He was just, uh, he was enjoying himself. And so anyway, um, and so through all that, uh, I missed lots of opportunities to participate in the, in kingdom things, because in the church, if you're if, if you're fornicating or if you're participating in any spirit of sin, you cannot uh, volunteer for any group. They won't let you. 
especially in a uh, Pentecostal church. They won't let you do it. They won't. And so anyway, I lost that opportunity, but I kept trying anyway. And so I would do other things like I would just go out on my own. I would learn. Good. But the funny thing is, even though you, you, you're experiencing that, they'll still train you up in a way to go. Like they'll train you how to witness and evangelize. And they'll keep on praying for you to uh, get right with God. <laughs> I kid you not. They'll train you because that's the job they're supposed to. And so they train me and I learned how to witness. And so I would go out. I would go out with the group and sometimes I would do it on my own. I would I would start making up invitations. I came up with all sorts of things. And I tried to tell them, you know, let's have this, this, and this. And they would do it on a small scale. Sometimes they would just completely knock me down. Just like, no. Um, and the bad thing is women were not allowed to have much power in the church. Which that you got to, if you are a pastor, you got to cut that out. Because, and the reason why I say this is because the women, um, women have lots of access and women are nurturers. Naturally, they're nurturers. Even the, even the most career prone, successful woman is still a nurturer. You're like, wait a minute, but she's in business. How is she a nurturer? Her child is that business. If you hire a woman as the head of your company. She will nurture that company like it's a baby, especially if she ain't got no kids. Because that's where all her time is going to go to, making sure that that thing becomes a success. If you give her the tools and she has the money and the resources, and if you allow her to go and do that thing, she'll do it. If you don't kick her down every time, I'm telling you, she'll do it. And she'll do it successfully. Pardon me. My morning sneeze. And so anyway, um, and so that that's what I've noticed because within it, what happened was within the church, there were many successful women. And the one thing that they kept telling me, because I, I was interviewing them, this is by the time I was still thinking, I was I started thinking about, you know, I should have my own radio show. You know, I I, I need to be in radio. I need, I wanted to be around music, but they, nobody would let me in. They, they wouldn't, nobody wanted to train me and I didn't have the money to go and pay for it. And I was like, church is supposed to be free music training. It's like, no, no, no. Uh, and so anyway, uh, I started talking to the women and one of the key things that they kept telling me is that they said the men would not let us in. So we had to go out on our own. Or they would say, well, my husband would beat me. He would abuse me. He would beat me down. I was black and blue. And I got tired and I didn't want that for my daughters. And I didn't want my son to become like his father. So I had to leave him and go out on my own. And I refused to marry because I don't want to be beat again. I don't want to depend on a man to do, to provide for me because each time, every experience that I have had, even growing up, they have beat me. Either physically or verbally, even spiritually. These women would complain about being assaulted and beat upon. I was like, wow. Or they would say, my husband is stingy. That is a terrible thing. Stinginess for the head of a household is not good. It's one thing when you're trying to build something, then you need to share with your wife what it is that you're trying to build. Because when you don't share what's on your heart and what you're trying to do for her, she thinks you're being stingy and she resents you and she goes against everything you're trying to do. Everything. And you have to work three times as hard to get the thing that you're trying to achieve for her and your family. When if you just share with her what you're trying to do, because you're not the head of you. You're not the head of just you. You're the head of her and the children, the whole household, the whole family, everybody up under your house, you the head of. So you need to not let your family know what it is that you're working towards so that every step they take in every word that they think and contemplate, they will consider you and how hard you are working to achieve that thing. 
You must share with your wife and your children what you're trying to do so that they'll be an assistance to you instead of a hindrance. And so what the women, what the women were telling me is that, you know, um, I started my own business, so I have my own money and now I don't have to ask him for any money. And so what she did is she created an economy for herself. When the both of you are supposed to be the economy, the both of you, I ain't saying that a woman should not work. A woman should absolutely work if she want to work and a man should work if he want to work. I ain't trying to tell y'all how to run your money. Not at all. But I'm telling you, oftentimes you look at women and you don't think of them as a whole person. Even now in 2021, you don't think of them as a whole person. Women are still paid less than men. Some women do get a, a lot more than the average person. But if we're just talking about normal averages, women don't get it. They don't get it. And then women tear down other women. But it's the one that has that wisdom, that strength and wisdom to know it is better for me to build up another woman than it is for me to tear down another woman. Why is that? Because that woman becomes your resource, which means if you build her up, what is she going to do? She going to talk about how good you were to her. And if you run a business, she's going to tell people. Oh, this is my, this is the lady that helped me. This is a lady that encouraged me to do well. You know what? We're going to go to her store. We're going to go to her business. Let's go to her business. Let's go bless her. And then those women are going to tell other women and their husbands and they're going to bring their children. So if you run a restaurant, the families are coming to eat at your restaurant. If you run a marketing business, those families and their friends and their neighborhoods and their block clubs and their gr- their grocery stores and their uh, uh, um, what do you call them? Uh, clothing stores and and dry cleaners and and radio record companies. They come into you. Don't think that clothing stores are gone just because everything is online and you got individual designers and apps to design clothes. Because even though the app designs, even though the app takes your measurement, somebody got to come up with that creation. And even if you automate an AI, artificial intelligence, to make creations, and it can only make it based off of what's already done or what you tell it to do. So somebody got to be there doing the tinkering. If you will build people up, build the men up, build the women up. Don't be narcissistic and tell them they're only good when you tell them that they're good. If they're not pleasing you and honoring you 100% all the time, then they are no good. You can't have your cake and eat it too, meaning you, you building something, but yet you won't tell them what they're building. Then you expect them to support you 100% when they don't even know what you're doing. Everybody's doing their own thing. And then you say, well, they don't honor me. They don't respect me. They don't know what to respect because you have not told them anything. You haven't told them anything. They don't, they don't know what they just doing their own thing. For example, it's like this. Here's a good example. You want your son to mow the grass when he come home from school or do it on the weekend. That way it's a little less from you. You can relax a little bit when you come home from work. He's 14 years old. He know how to work the thing. He can do it. But he, you haven't shared this with him. You haven't instilled in him, look, you see the grass getting high, go ahead and cut it. Go ahead and do it once a week. Just do that. But you haven't taught all the time. You taught him how to use it so that he wouldn't get hurt on it. But you didn't tell him, look, this is what I want you to do every week. Or at least when you see it getting high, go ahead and cut that grass. I want you to help me out like that. You didn't, if you don't train him up in the way to go, he don't know. You like, well, common sense says to do that. Yeah. But 13 and 14 common sense is I want to hang with my friends. Mom and daddy didn't tell me to do X, Y, Z. So I ain't going to do that. I want to have fun first. If you don't train them up in the way to go, they're going to do what is pleasing to them. And they will think about you last. So when you are building a business and you are training people and you got, sorry, you are hiring people, you got to train those people in the things that you want them to do in your company. And so when I was talking to these women, 
They were telling me some interesting things. They were like, well, we train people on how to do this. And I have X amount of people working for me. And in the church, there were millionaires. But they they didn't look like it. There were millionaires in the church, didn't look like it. They didn't need their husbands for money. They didn't need that. They didn't need a man for money. They had everything they needed. Because that man refused to give them money, so they went and got it on their own. That man beat them down, so they left that man and went and got money on their own. But one thing they did do that the man did not do is they trained their children on how to get money. That's one of the differences between men and women. Women, when they, because they, get, they understand the struggle and they understand that, they, that life does not end with them. They will train the children and how to get money so that the children don't struggle. A man has to remember that he is not the end. He is the head of the house and that there's many up under him. And so he has to remember to train them. But sometimes he's so focused on providing for the family that he forgets to tell his sons and daughters what he did to get the money and how he got the money. And so I was talking to them and I'm listening and I'm just listening every week. They would come and tell me something. And so I was like, okay, well, what can I do? What, how can I help? Cause my whole focus was on God. That was my focus. Like, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? And so I just, I was like, okay, well, let me just hustle. Let me hustle. And I hustled and I was making some good money. The only thing I couldn't do that they were doing is they were cleaning houses and cleaning houses makes good money. But the reason why I couldn't is because, um, I could not be alone in somebody in a man's house. You're like, well, they were alone in a man's house. They were not me. They were not me. And so I could not be alone in a man's house. And so each time I, it, like, for example, when I would be alone with a man, there will always be this spirit of Amnon that would come upon them and knowing. And I thought, well, shoot, is it me? Because I would be dressed raggedy. I wouldn't have on tight clothes. I didn't, I know, I'm like, what is it? And so, and, and when the women would see me, they would just get offended immediately. And I had no idea what they were looking at. I'm like, I got on baggy clothes. I'm I'm basically like a maid. What are you, you know, I'm almost a contractor though, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't see what they're seeing. What, what's the problem? And so I was like, okay, well, this is not for me. Evidently, if I'm having this much trouble, then this particular thing is not for me. And so what I discovered, what was for me was the radio. You're like, why? Because you're alone? No, because I thoroughly enjoy it. And I do get to interview people, although I haven't interviewed people in the last year or two. I do get to interview people and I do get to talk to people. And I, I thoroughly enjoy the word and I thoroughly enjoy offering salvation. And speaking of interviews, we're going to start doing that again. Uh, coronavirus, kind of, because uh, I like to interview people in person. I like to go around and talk to people. But a lot of times I will do it over the phone. Um, and so anyway, um, no excuses here. I just didn't do the interviews. Um, I had, a, it's so funny. I would ask for interviews and they would give me books to read. <laughs> I was like, um, this is not for me. This is for the people listening, but I would read the books anyway. <laughs> I was like, cause they thought that I was asking them beginner, Christ, beginner Christian questions. I wasn't asking them beginner Christian questions for me. I was asking them beginner Christian uh, questions for those that are getting saved that are listening to the radio program. And so again, they started telling me, no, we don't want you a part of this church. One guy was like, I want you to read this first because you look a little young from the spirit. You look a little young. That's why I, I discerned and interpreted that he thought that I was a little young in the spirit. Um, Jesus says to, to come up to him like a little child. I try not to be haughty. I try not to esteem myself above other people. And I follow the word. And sometimes because I follow the word, people think that I'm putting, my, I'm setting myself above them. And I'm not. I'm just trying so hard to follow the word because I don't want to go to hell. And so 
I try. And when I discovered, well, like I said this morning, I discovered uh, that uh, I was listening. And I heard the seven spirits of God. I'm like, what is the seven spirits of God? I told you, I don't know everything. I'll be learning too. I learn right with y'all. And so I looked up in, and it said that it was in Isaiah chapter 11, verse two. And it says, and the, uh, well, first one says, verse one says, let me see if I got enough time. I didn't talk. And so verse one says, and there should come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's one. The spirit of wisdom, two. And understanding, that's three. The spirit of counsel, that's four. And might, that's five. The spirit of knowledge, that's six. And the fear of the Lord, that's seven. I was like, what? And then in verse three, it says, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of uh, after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. And so they're talking about Jesus and Jesus is righteous and he judges the poor and repair. It says, uh, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and shall, um, and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath, uh, of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And so, you can go all the way down to verse 10. And um, and it's it's talking about Jesus and the coming of Jesus. So you got the first coming of Jesus and then the second coming of Jesus. And so that's what it's talking about. With, but with the cool thing, all of it's real cool. But what I was looking at is the seven spirits of God. And so those seven spirits of God are in us. Because Jesus says he's in us. Those seven spirits of God are in us upon salvation. I should say, hold on. Those seven spirits of God are in us from the foundation of the earth. From the moment that he made man in Genesis. When he said, let us make man in our image. Those things were in us. He gave us those things. When Adam and Eve sinned, those things got covered up. You ain't getting no revelation of God. And you in sin, you hang that up, hang that up. You need, let me see your obedience. You know, you know how people want to see when, when they say, when you say you can dance, they be like, well, let me see. And God is saying, you say you love me. Let me see. Prove it. You're like, well, how can I prove it? Honor God in all your ways. Only serve one God, him. Prove it. But when Jesus came and paid the price on the cross and paid the price for all our sins, he proved it for us. Because even though we were walking obedience before he came and put himself on the cross, we still couldn't fulfill every law. We can't even do all the Ten Commandments. There's only ten, but there's more laws than ten. Jesus fulfilled not only the Ten Commandments, but every law that was written. There's a lot of them. And then he gave us another one. He says, love the Lord that God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ as Jesus loves the church. Mark 12, 29 and 31. And then John 14, John 13, 34, 35. Jesus is the only one that, that did it. He fulfilled all the laws of the Old Testament and then gave us three more laws that summarize all the Old Testament laws. But because of the blood of Jesus, we not only keep all the Old Testament, we keep and, and then he helped us to keep the New Testament made it simple and easy. And he gives us all these seven spirits of God. Amen. Glory to God. The spirit of life that rests upon him. I'm sorry. The spirit of the Lord that rests upon him. That's life. The spirit of wisdom. That's the sermon. The spirit of understanding. That's application of the discernment. That's execution. The spirit of counsel, the Holy Spirit of might, Adonai, that is strength. The spirit of knowledge. You know what that is. How do I do what I need to do? How do I get this thing? How do I feed 5,000 people with five loaves and well, five fish and two loaves of bread? 
and fear of the Lord. Reverence. That serving God and owning him 100% all day, every day. Even when you sleep. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. The enemy will try and come at you when you're sleeping to try and make you commit fornication in your sleep. But with God, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and kick that enemy off of you. The Holy Spirit will wake you up. You have the ability that your spirit will, will awake. Your spirit will rise up while your body is sleeping and rebuke the devil. That's by the option of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will wake up your body and tell you to pray. To rebuke the devil. God has more many ways to bless you and to protect you and to keep you. When you keep the word of God while you are awake, it will be your shield and buckler as well as when you sleep. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to. Now is the time to give your heart to the Lord. Remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Mm. Hold on. Let's go back. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. And for bringing me back to where I once was with you, Lord Jehovah. From this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved. And receive you today wholeheartedly, 100%. Make me a light in this earth and the salt that gives it flavor. And from this day forward, I will live for you, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus. And share the gospel of Christ Jesus with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with evidence of speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God. Amen, amen, and amen. You just got saved on LUTGradio.com, WKKP Digital Broadcasting. Hallelujah. My name is Kathy Broxon. This is the LUTG Radio Show. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Be like Jesus. That's the name of the show. In case I didn't say that, but that's what it is. Be like Jesus. And that's what we want to be like Jesus. Remember, men, you are the head of your household. Share your dream with your wife and with your children. Share them what you're trying to do. You and your wife are to act as one. Let her share her dreams with you. You all may have the same dream. She will always support you in your dream. When she, a woman that loves you will support you in your dreams. But if she tells you that your dreams, that you are being ineffective, meaning you're not bringing home enough money, then it is that time that the both of you are to pray and ask God what it is that you need to do to bring the money that you need for the household. So she's not being mean. She's telling you, hold on, we're not making enough. And if your husband tells you, look, girl, You doing something that ain't making you no money and you need money. You need this thing needs to have money to support itself. Then y'all need to get together and figure out what's going on. But if he knows what the problem is, listen to him. He probably got that wisdom. God will tell a man what is going on because, you know, he's saying, God, she ain't even making no money. How, How can I help her to make some money? 
So she ain't draining our income. But that this thing that she's doing is making money. And so y'all get together and talk. Amen. Glory to God. Have a great day. My name is Kathy Brox. L-U-T-G-Radio.com.